All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the second session of Star Trek October. Uh, we are a Star Trek Adventures actual play set in the year 2414 aboard a brand new specialized starbase in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. Uh, you probably recognize my players as they're the same ones that you might have watched in the Fenrir game. Now, you don't need to have watched Fenrir, Matahari, Groundskeepers, none of those. Don't need to have watched those to enjoy October, but you probably will catch a few nods and references if you do. If you're interested in playing catch up, you can find the VODs on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like iTunes and Spotify. Now, the only announcement I have this week is that I am doing an Extra Life campaign that will stretch through September on through to November. Uh, specifically for the month of September, though, I'll be donating 25% of my bits and subs to the cause, in addition to whatever you lovely people out there donate. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, there should be a link below the stream that should let you pretty much just hit the donate button and you can do it right from your browser. Uh, but with that said, let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with the captain. Hey everybody, I'm Dag. I am your captain, Captain Ibshin Kijwik. I am a Zaldan, webbed hand and all. Uh, I hope we're going to have a good day game tonight, and you can find me on Twitter at TrekNexus. Yep, up next is you, John. Uh, hello, my name is John. Uh, I play the hotshot pilot, um, Lieutenant Junior Grade Terrell. And uh, looking forward to playing. And also, if you need another game to watch, you should watch Groundskeepers. So just saying. Bill and Ted in Star Wars is a fun game to watch. In Star Wars, yes. We also cross the streams a little bit. Oh, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's been a long day. No, nah, it's all right. Up next is Matthew. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play Lieutenant Junior Grade Janna, a uh, somewhat uncertain Cation engineer. All right. Aaron, you're up next. Hey guys, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Keeve Dottig, the Chief Medical Officer of Deep Space October. Uh, you can find me online at Panorama Tent. And last but not least, we have Watney. Hi, hey, I'm Watney. I play the half Betazoid, half human Chief of Security, Lieutenant Commander Statko. You can find me on Twitter at Doc Watney. All righty. And with that said, let's go ahead and run our shiny introduction vid. On that note, welcome back. And something I like doing for all my Star Trek games in particular is I like having the players do an opening log. And tonight, uh, we're going to actually do a little bit of uh, narrative feel before I let uh, Dag do the opening log. So our first scene is actually of Deep Space October, uh, sort of a nice external shot above the saucer section. Um, but what really catches your attention, perhaps, is the fact that in the distance there is a rather large swirling vortex of purple energy uh, that seems to be approaching the station. And now, Mr. Kijwick, if you would be so kind. Captain's log, start at 91593 Mark II. These past few weeks have seen relative calm since we sent two hostile undying ships running for parts unknown. I have devoted a lot of time getting to know DSO and as much of her crew and civilian population as possible. I admit I have spent more than my fair share of time at Penthouse, the station's hub of Lower Decks activities. 
It's also got the best Andorian Kolsch I can find. The grunts that frequent there are a little jumpy at first, but they loosen up when they see that my official proprietary is tossed to the wind while I have a beer in my hand. They even dedicated a recliner to me after one rousing night of song and story. Also, Jen hasn't stopped gushing about the medical facility since her tour two weeks ago. Operationally speaking, DSO is still coming together. While we haven't had any interruptions in ops, other decks have reported power outages, climate problems, and in one case, a split-second cargo bay decompression when a force field emitter failed. No one was hurt, but it bungled traffic outside the station for a few hours while the ejected cargo was gathered. As is expected of all new state-of-the-art facilities, we'll be ironing out the kinks between what the designers expect and what we observe out here in the black. Nevertheless, my heart has warmed to calling here home for the time being. The true test of station solidarity is 12 hours away. A neutronic storm is coming that will, among other things, black out comms for a week. While engineering battens down the hatches, I've asked for a security alert to begin an hour before the storm hits. These are the times that opportunistic criminals come out to play, and I'm not about to make it easy for them. End log. Very nice. And again, I don't usually do this, but I just see that Anonymous has donated 50 to Extra Life. Thank you so much for that. All right, so our first scene is actually going to be uh, in main engineering of the station. And uh, main engineering is a little bit different than what you might expect um, from a station. You know, normally in Star Trek, we see um, big old warp cores, uh, multiple levels, things like that. But engineering on a starbase is another beast entirely. Um, so if you will imagine for a moment, the area that we sort of zoom the camera into uh, has Terrell, Stetko, and Janna. And it looks more like a control room that you might find in, say, a, uh, a nuclear plant or a, um, some sort of a power plant in real life. Um, and it sort of, sort of overlooks a very large open area with a similar looking sort of warp core tubule that comes right up the space. But if you were to actually look down into the space, what you would see is that it stretches down for maybe about 10 to 15 decks before the massive power reactor um, is basically being fed matter and antimatter from two sides. Um, but uh, there are engineers pretty much all over the space. Some are at consoles frantically working. Some are rushing to and fro. But we wanted to zoom in and see what our three player characters were up to. So Stetko, Terrell, Jana, take it away. Well, uh, Commander Stetko, um, I've attempted to remodulate the shields in order to account for the radiolytic isotopes that we're expecting from the storm. But, uh, I mean, that's almost more your department considering your tactical expertise. Uh, well, as long as all of the shield generators are outfitted with this configuration, I think we should be fine. Well, uh, I'll be sure to get my engineering teams on that right away. Thank you, Commander. Of course. Hmm. Rel is just leaning up against the wall. He's got like one foot up against the wall, and mm -hmm. he's just kind of half paying attention. Uh, uh, be my guest, Commander. <laughs> Lieutenant, what are you doing? No. Oh. What do you mean? Here. What are you doing here in engineering? I came down to help my buddy. <laughs> um, Jana, how is uh, is he helping you? Just define helping. I mean, he's he's great moral support. Hmm. He's a he's a. He's a an incredibly talented engineer too when he applies himself i mean I, i'm sure they could organize a few repair crews here and there um isn't that your job well i mean there are chief engineers and then there are the people that you delegate to right? at least that's how i understand this right that that is how engineering and command works uh sure um lieutenant You're you're not like a yellow shirt. You're wearing a red shirt. So tell me about your engineering experience, please. Actually, I had a rough time coming out of uh, 
coming out of the academy trying to decide whether or not to go into engineering or into uh into con and uh becoming just a straight pilot um yeah i actually know quite a bit about uh this this stuff and he just like waves his hand around the room dismissively to be fair he did actually get fairly reasonably good grades in those engineering classes Eh? he kind of gives gives stetco like this half smile you're playing with fire lieutenant uh be sure that you don't i prefer to make any change as, (laughs) as playing with plasma but you know whatever we have a very dangerous storm on the way so be sure that you don't touch anything you're not supposed to and I was waiting for someone to mention that. So uh, I'm going to spend two threat. Terrell, maybe you just adjust your seating a little bit and your foot taps one of the buttons on the oh console. God. And <laughs> immediately uh, what happens is the, the almost like a miniature red alert begins sounding in main engineering as the computer says, engaging core lockdown sequence. Uh, he sits up real quick and uh, gets it to stop. <laughs> I need you to roll me a control engineering difficulty of two. Engineering difficulty And I'm two. just going to laugh. If you complicate this, well, we <laughs> just found our B plot. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and give you a threat. <laughs> All right. Because, you know, it makes it more fun. And it allows me to utilize untapped potential. That it does. And uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it should be. Uh, what about uh, Starship Construction? <laughs> I'll give it to you. One. All I'll right. give it to you this once. I'll give it <laughs> to you. Hey, three successes. It means you get one momentum. So yeah, Terrell, you sit up and very quickly stop the alert from happening and everything calms down. And I get a threat. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Um, Jero, you know, I I appreciate you, and I, I want you to know that I validate you as a person, but uh, <laughs> maybe you can just refrain, just go back to sitting the way you were. I think that was the most helpful thing that you could do. Hey, I was perfectly fine until somebody decided to lecture me. Ironically, that is true. So, in a way, no, I mean, no offense, Commander. No, actually, you know what? This is my fault. Um, I don't know how, but it's probably my fault in some, some way. Look, both of you, if this gets fucked up, you're answering to Kijwick. Isn't that always true? Don't you yes, have it is, like- but I have to point it out because you're acting like you don't believe it. Don't you have somebody to like harass on the main promenade or something? <laughs> what? Wow. Uh, you, I think red alert has been set. I'm just going to go over there and do engineering things, which is what I do. So um, he's just going to walk off over here so that Stetco is not looking at him. Um. Oh, God. He's so annoying. <laughs> um, she'll just kind of like give him a dagger glare and uh, maybe she'll start to work at a console I think that's the perfect transition point we're going to go to sickbay where Dottig you're working on a uh, experimental procedure and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that uh, it's a comparative analysis between the uh, diseases uh, Bendy syndrome, which affect Vulcans over the age of 200, and Xanthi fever, which affects uh, mature Betazoids. Dottig has a working theory that in both cases, we can actually consider the emotions themselves to be neurotoxic and uh, is working to genotype uh, both viruses on a sub-molecular level. Okay. I like it. Uh, I'll even give you a momentum for that lovely bit of medical babble. Uh, let's say that you will need to roll me a daring in a medicine 
a difficulty of two in order to get this done before the storm hits. Okay. Uh, all right, just go check my talents here. I think. Nope. Don't you have uh, virology? I think. Uh, I am. I am. Yeah, that's the. I've got a focus in virology. Yeah, I'd give it uh, to you. All right, perfect. Yeah, just checking my talents to see if any of them would apply, but I don't think they would. Nope, not for this one. All right. And daring plus medicine. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use one of those momentum for an extra die. All right. Wow, that is uh, five successes. Very nice, which means by my count, you're up to four momentum. Yeah, so Datig, initially, you almost do a Scotty thing where you estimate that it'll take... Oh, maybe five, six hours, but you get it done in like two. So you actually finish with time to spare. And, you know, you're, of course, correlating the results. You're you're cataloging them. You're putting, you know, your notes on the whole thing. Um, when you notice two new faces in sick bay. Now, it might just be because, you know, you haven't met all your staff yet. Or maybe they're entirely new. You're not sure. Uh, but two faces stick out to you as you sort of do your rounds of sick bay. Um, the first is a trill, uh, stands about 6'2", uh, has no hair, completely bald. Uh, very impressive, almost imposing eyebrows. Um, you know them as Lieutenant Carr, or at least that's what your, the computer will return if you were to look them up. Mm -hmm. um, they appear to be assisting uh, some of the patients that have come in for a bit of a flu strain. Um, so he's helping out there. Uh, there's another trill uh, that's currently chatting up Nurse Chan at the front desk, and he looks to be a little bit younger. Uh, he actually has a full head of hair, uh, cut somewhat short, but also a little bit uh, scraggly at the ends. And uh, you know him as Ensign Grigax. And I thought I would point out those two just in case you wanted to say hello. Sure. I'll mosey over to, uh, to Lieutenant Carr first. Okay. And... Uh... <laughs> Dante's not going to look him up in the registry. He's just going to look him. Who are you? And uh, Lieutenant Carr almost jumps at the sudden sound, and he, he looks around and then looks down, because, you know, you're a teller, right? You're, you're kind of short. Mm -hmm. uh, but he looks down at you and says, Oh, uh, sorry, sir. Um, uh, I'm Lieutenant Carr. I'm your new orderly for Beta Shift. Oh. Well, I suppose it's nice to meet you. Uh, like, likewise, sir, um, do, do you need a report on the flu situation? Please. And, uh, he actually pulls up his tricorder and says, well, uh, strain 67D was detected about two hours ago. We deployed, of course, the correct antibodies into the station's life support systems. So the entire station should be getting inoculated right about now. As for these patients here, and he motions at the four on the beds, uh, they appear to be a little bit more severely affected, sir. Uh, we're seeing that they're experiencing some pulmon pulmonary distress. Hmm. Have you... That's quite odd. Have you attempted treatment with a wide-spectrum antiviral agent? That was the first thing I tried, sir. And to be honest, it didn't work. I'm not really sure why. Are we sure this is viral and not bacterial? Um, I believe so, sir. And he actually like pulls up a pad and transfers the data and hands it to you. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to roll me an insight medicine difficulty of one here. And I guess my virology would still apply. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Two successes. You're up to five momentum. Yeah, I mean, from what you're seeing on his scan data, this should be, by all accounts, this should be, you know, easily treated with antibiotics, but it's not. Hmm. Lieutenant, run a microcellular scan and see if perhaps there's a bacterial strain hiding within the virus itself. I'll get on it, sir. Um, and he actually looks up and past you and says, um, sir? Who's that? And uh, you follow where he's pointing. And uh, stepping into sickbay is a very large, imposing gentleman 
with the Viking-like de- description, uh, Lieutenant Jenkins. And when we first saw Jenkins, you know, he was missing an arm, literally just kind of carrying it around. This time, he is literally sporting what appears to be... Um, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this. Uh, if you were to imagine like a tornado of razor blades... And putting someone in that tornado, that's what Jenkins looks like right now. Excuse me, please. And he's going to walk out to Jenkins. What and, the hell have Ensign you done Gr- to yourself now? And, and Ensign Grigax is right there, already with a tricorder out, scanning and asking the same questions. But Jenkins says, um, Well, sir, um, I was preparing conduit on deck five, and then I fell and slipped. Uh, I feel fine. I I just I was receiving strange looks. I thought it would be good to come here. Jenkins, please take a seat. You are losing blood. And he looks down at himself and says, "Oh, I did. I hardly noticed." Very good. Have we taken that neurological scan of you yet to measure your actual pain threshold? And uh, Ensign Grigax next to you says, um, I was meaning to talk to you about that, sir. Um, he is extremely abnormal. It's Are, are you familiar with the Earth character fictional? I'm, I'm not really sure. Are you, are you familiar with a Rasputin? Who the hell are you? I, I'm, I'm Ensign Grigax, sir. Very good. And you, you're on my medical staff? Uh, yeah, came in today, actually. Oh, welcome to sickbay. Uh, why don't you come along? And we're going to take Jenkins to a, um, a bio pad. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ensign, please uh, get me a dermal regenerator and a uh, low-grade plasma infuser. All right. <laughs> Also, thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous Bit Bomber. I see you've returned. We always appreciate your presence. But yeah, uh, we're going to shift from sick bay to the captain's ready room, where you're having a conversation with a Cation, uh, specifically a character we have seen before, but first time on October, a dark-skinned and dark-furred uh, Admiral Hamasi. Uh, now, the way this works is uh, normally you would have them on your little, like, desk side computer, Kijwik. But this time, Hamasi's actually using the holographic systems in her office uh, and the ones in yours. So it literally looks like she is sitting across from you at the desk. So I believe, Admiral, that we will be ready to face this storm on time. It's uh, very good, Mr. Kiswick. Uh My only concern is your engineering staff. I see they are, well, to put it bluntly, I see that they are junior. Are you sure they're up to the task? I have full confidence in my engineering staff. Lieutenant Jana has shown the utmost prowess in addressing the issues on the station since we arrived. I see, I see. And she actually cracks a smile and she says... I think we'll find out very quickly if Jana is up to the task. It uh, reminds me of when the Amalthea got trapped in the Gamma Quadrant. Uh, we saw quite a number of uh, people stepping up to the plate, as it were. Uh, however, the reason I contacted you, Captain, is uh, I needed you to see this. And uh, she sort of does a sweeping motion with her hand. And appearing above your desk is the holographic readout of almost what it looks like to be is a dossier. Uh, like a um, like a police report almost. And you see that there is an organization known as The Hand. That's literally the title is The Hand. And you see that they have done a string of piracy-related activities between uh, Deep Space Daedalus, where Hamasi is, and Deep Space October, where you are. You suspect that operatives for this organization may already be aboard DSO? I would say that uh, I would bet my finest bottle of whiskey on it, yes. All right. Well, I, I did order a security alert to initiate an hour before the lockdown. Um, I will make sure that my security officers are prepared for this. Do you have any facial um, 
identities of these criminals? That's the strangest thing, Captain, is we actually haven't been able to get a confirmed facial pattern of operatives. We know that they are obviously existent and operating in the area, but um, you remember the Maquis, right? Of course. Kind of the same scenario there where there's just so many, I hate to put it this way, so many nondescript people who are unassuming that they could literally be anyone. Is there any similarities in the kind of cargo they're stealing? Um, yes, in fact. They are interested mostly in biomimetic gel. Of course they are. All right. I will put Dr. Dodding's staff on alert as well. Oh, and uh, one other thing, Captain. Uh, I understand you are a regular at a club on your station already. <laughs> Word travels fast. I wouldn't be a very good admiral if I didn't read the reports that came across my desk. Well, you probably noticed that we've been ordering a lot more Andorian cults lately, too. Let's just say I have a certain uh, Saragossa headed out your way with a fresh shipment. Is she going to be here before the storm hits? Nah, sometime afterwards. Of course. All right, Admiral. All right. And while they're talking, Kiswick is forwarding the dossier to Stetco and Dodig. Gotcha. And right as the Admiral starts to open her mouth and, you know, sign off, I'm going to spend two threat. Kiswick, you hear something in the ceiling again. Um, Admiral, do you think you might be able to requisition an emergency supply of uh, Telerian hook spider anti-bug? <laughs> we we've it, got an infestation on the planet. She kind of cocks her head to the side. How do you already have a Telerian hook spider infestation? <laughs> We're still investigating how they got here, but uh, they breed a little too quickly for our liking. I'll That's... see what I can do. And it's right about then, right as we do the scene transition, that a literal hook spider uh, is going to drop right onto Kijwick. But we're going to cut away with that as maybe Kijwick flails and or screams and or shoots it. <laughs> All right, so we are actually going to go to... Let's actually go to traffic control room here. In comparison, um, Bree had it easy. <laughs> We're just ceiling tiles falling down. <laughs> you know, I always have to put something in the ceiling for people to freak out about. All right, so we are going to cut to the traffic control room where, Terrell, uh, you're actually doing one of those things where... You're sort of checking in and making sure, because it is sort of your job to make sure that all the ships coming and going up from the station are going to be either docked or otherwise away from the station by the time the storm hits. And the traffic control room, again, is sort of a um, an overlooking area of the promenade and an overlooking area of the docks. Um, but what you're noticing, Terrell, is that there's not a whole lot of controllers here, as in three or four people haven't reported in for their shift. Uh, he's going to use this uh, opportunity. Uh, computer, uh, play old um, music, uh, Blitzkrieg Bop, please. <laughs> and the computer turns for a second and says, which remix would you prefer? Uh, it's just uh, the Ramones. What else? <laughs> and of course, it begins playing, I'm assuming, very loudly over mm -hmm. the speakers. Mm-hmm. And I'd and like his, to. Oh, go ahead. And he'll send a quick message out to the captain that uh, you now three people haven't reported for uh, duty. But he he's not going to do it as a communication. He's basically going to text him. Text him. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Terrell, while you're here, I would like to see a presence and a con to see if you are able to rally your existing operators to do the job that uh, the three people would normally do. And I'll spend a momentum. All right. Because of the, you know, nice untapped potential stuff. Mm -hmm. Difficulty is only a two. All right. And uh, well, let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything that can uh, really be an uh, applicable focus here. There you go. Three successes, which means you're up to five momentum, possibly six here. Nope, I get a threat. <laughs> All right, so Terrell, you use your um, 
say unique talents to motivate people. In fact, I almost want to hear that a little bit. What's what sort of a speech or what sort of a a monologue do you deliver to get people going? You know, there's there's the main crew that usually takes care of this flight deck. And there's the other crew. We're the other crew. <laughs> so let's show people that we're just as good as everybody else. And, and we can get this taken care of. And afterwards, drinks, a round of drinks on me at the penthouse. And yeah, I'd say that that is sufficiently motivated that uh, your team actually begins to push through a little bit quicker. Uh, almost as if you were to go into an air traffic control tower in real life and give them all coffee. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where, again, you're pushing people in and out of the station very quickly. But what you're noticing is one problem in particular. Uh, one of the Andorian transports, um, ironically named the Ice Pick, um, they are experiencing engine failure and aren't going to be able to get out of here before the storm hits. So what would you like to do about it? Uh, which are, uh, are they currently docked? I guess I should describe that a little bit more. That's my fault. Mm -hmm. So the ice pick is sort of listing away from the station, maybe about one or two AU out. And the problem is not so much that um, they're experiencing engine failure and couldn't get back to the station. The problem is you literally don't have a space for them in the docks right now. Like all of your docking space is currently occupied. Hmm. Um, based on prior, based on priorities, uh, what kind of other? Oh, actually, he's going to be. Uh, he's going to quickly scan through the ships that are currently in the uh, in the docks. He's going to find a a low priority vessel mm -hmm. that he could potentially uh, do a replacement and have the Andorian uh, vessel dock in that bay. And then what he's going to do is he's going to run out, uh, go ahead and take that, uh, take that ship. Mm -hmm. And he's going to kind of land it on the outside of the station and mm -hmm. just clamp it to the side. Ah, okay. And then he'll come, he'll, he figures he'll come back later and, uh, and free it up. And he's going to try to clamp it in an area that, is a little bit more protected so maybe like along the inside like one of the uh quote-unquote armor plates on the lower part of the station where it sort of protects the reactor yeah okay yeah he knows it's not you know regulation by any means but hey you know unique issues require unique solutions that they do my only question is are you telling kiswick or stetco or really anyone about this uh he'll send a text message to the captain all right, Captain, are you paying attention to your text messages? Yeah, uh, with the first one, Kiswick thinks it's really unusual that uh, these three officers with a performance history are suddenly all absent today now and is running a more in-depth uh, analysis about how they came to serve in Starfleet. And uh, what about when the second one comes across? Um. All it says is uh, clamping ship to uh, station to make room. <laughs> I really need to. And it, to said, and it says BRB. <laughs> I, I really need to talk to him about formal docking communications. But otherwise, um, focused on these three individuals who didn't show up for their shift. Okay. I'd like you to roll me a insight command, Kijwick, uh, difficulty of two. And if you have anything related to Starfleet regulation, Starfleet protocol, um, team management, all would be good focuses. All right. I will spend a momentum to get a third dice. All right. And what were the things that you said I could have a focus in? Uh, Starfleet protocol, Starfleet regulation, uh, team management, things of that nature. Nope. Best I got is diplomacy. But we'll go with what we have. Ha! Interesting. So you do get two successes, but there's a complication. 
I like it. So you do succeed, and you see that, yeah, up until this point, um, all of the officers in question were pretty much, you know, stellar operatives, to put it bluntly. They were maybe not top of their class, but they were high scoring in the academy. They've always done well in the reviews. But one in particular stands out to you, and this is where the complication comes into play. You're seeing that an individual known as Sven, S-V-E-N, a human from Earth, um, she actually has a pattern of doing this where she gets established somewhere and then doesn't start showing up for shifts for some reason. And this sort of repeats until she eventually gets called on it and then she's sort of transferred to another ship, another station, etc., etc., uh, her rank is, um, let's give her lieutenant rank. And does she have any history with the law? Uh, I'm assuming like brig time, you're asking. Yeah, cross-referencing for um, brig time, anything that might be related to the concerns we're looking out for at the station, with the, the hand, the biodynamic gel. Uh, if you give me a momentum, I will answer that question. Okay. All right. So based on what you see about the hand from the, the Admiral's dossier earlier, you are seeing some similarities in how Sven sort of operates, where you are seeing that they are maybe asking a few weird questions. You see that they're, you know, lurking in the lower areas of the station, but you don't have anything concrete is what I would say. And uh, Kishwick to Stedko. Go ahead. Um, we got three people in docking who didn't show up for their shifts today. And given the security procedures uh, we expect for the clampdown, it's kind of suspicious. So I did some checking. And um, I want you to keep an eye out for Lieutenant Sven. Uh, they seem to be a person of interest should anything happen during while the storm hits. I, sir, um, sidebar, have you told her about the hand? Yeah, he sent the dossier to Stetko and Dodic while he was speaking to the Admiral. Okay, so she already has that. Um, I've already authorized a silent yellow alert. Good. All right. I'll uh, carry on. Kishwick out. Right. Computer, locate Lieutenant Sven. And the computer does that sort of churning, beeping noise and says, unable to find Lieutenant Sven on station. What was Lieutenant Sven's last known location? And it sort of works again and gives the, um, not the address, but the location of their quarters. And at what time... Did they go off the radar? Uh, you're looking at the time code that it returns. It's maybe about two minutes after their shift would have started. Okay. And he'll forward that information to Stetko via pad. All right. So Stetko, what do you want to do with this information? Do you want to go to the quarters to check it out? You want to send your people to do it? Um, she'll make a personal visit to personal the quarters. Visit. All right, in that case, we're going to go to my one of my lower decks maps. All right, so Stutko, as you enter in to uh, this lower reaches of the station um, to sort of steal from lower decks, even if I disagree with some things lower decks does, I think it has some good ideas here and there. Uh, what I mean is that when you step into this area of the station, um, it's a very stark contrast to the quote-unquote upper decks where there's a lot of open space, there's a lot of um, people walking around that are in, you know, high uniforms, you know, neatly pressed, that sort of a thing. What you're seeing down here is the quote-unquote normal crowd, the enlisted crowd, the ensigns, um, all in varying states of disarray. Um, and a few do straighten up when they say lieutenant commander in their midst. Uh, but what you're seeing as you sort of walk along the corridors um, if you remember in Lower Decks how they literally have almost like the pod hotel um, mm -hmm. style of bedding, that's mm -hmm. sort of what you're seeing uh, along the walls. And if I okay. can point out on the map, 
Uh, this area over here to the left in particular uh, is a number of the pod hotel bedding. Um, but where you were sent, where Sven supposedly was, um, was one of these pod beds uh, over here to the left. Okay, so um, she will make sure her phaser is set to stun. Okay. And then she'll pull out her tricorder, approach the room, and um, see if the door is open. All right. So, uh, you know, of course, again, the few ensigns and uh, enlisted quickly get out of your way, uh, telling you're here with a purpose. Um, but when you sort of press the button on the side of the pod hotel to open up the door, it does not open. Hmm. Um, computer, this is Chief of Security Stetco. Um, authorize entry to the <laughs> um, deck 206, room 38. Uh, authorization code October Charlie Tango 616. All right. And uh, the computer does uh, acquiesce to your request. Uh, the light flashes green and the pod opens up. And inside, you don't see a body, but what you do see, almost in a very strange fashion, it's almost as if the uniform laying there was someone, like, someone was wearing the uniform and they were literally beamed out of it. So you're seeing what you're assuming is Sven's outfit, like her, you know, work uniform, communicator and all, just sort of laying on the bed. Computer, can you track any transport activity from this location in the last 72 hours? And almost like what happened with Kijwick when it was sort of churning, there's a noticeable pause as the computer works and the computer returns transport logs for 0800 to 0900 are unavailable. Uh, she will scan the the uniform in the surrounding area with her tricorder to see if she can pick up any additional details. Okay. Uh, roll me a reason security difficulty of three. And if you have investigation, uh, if you have analytics, uh, things like that would apply. Um... Forensic psychology, behavioral analysis. Um, I'll give you behavior analysis. I could see that applying. Okay. I would like to buy an extra dice. Okay. Hey, four successes. Very nice. You uh, get two Sweet. momentum from that. Or sorry, yeah. one momentum from that. Yeah, so Stutko, you're coming in the area, you know, you're asking around, you know, hey, have you seen Sven recently? You know, did you hear anything strange? And you get the same sort of story from everyone that they didn't hear anything, they didn't notice anything. Um, but you do confirm that a transport occurred at approximately 8.02 or two minutes after Sven's shift would have started. How does she get that information? Uh, I would say that you get it by your tricorder basically scanning the area, and okay. you would see that there is some form of indication, maybe isotope decay or some form of techno babble that we see that you know people invent all the time on screen. But basically, you can see that a transport occurred right around eight oh two. Okay, just gonna chat, tap her badge. Set code to Jana. Uh, yes, Commander. How can I help you? I'm getting conflicting messages from my tricorder and the station computer. Would you run a diagnostic? Uh, what particular records are you talking about? I'll uh, I'll check into them immediately myself. Uh, I think I better deliver this in person. If you'd prefer, of course, Commander. Uh, would you like to meet in main engineering? Yes. All right, so we'll cut to main engineering. All right. So she'll uh, stride in and uh, set her tricorder down. Uh, I, I'm i trying to find a certain crew member that was late for their shift and at the behest of the captain, of course. And I went to their quarters and found their 
she kind of looks down at her badge almost as though she's worried that she, they're being listened to. Uh, uh, she takes it off and then sets it on the on the on the table and she's like the computer told me a transport didn't happen in the room. There was a noticeable pause when it gave me the information, but my tricorder is saying that around 802 a signal there was a decaying signal. Hmm. Well, Jana will pluck off his badge and put it on the table. Uh, well, a transporter signature would leave, as you pointed out, a decaying electromagnetic signal or charge. Um, I guess I could cross-reference the various internal sensors against uh, computer records, but, well, any modification to the computer systems would probably leave a kind of uh, electrostatic discharge within the cryoneural gel packs. So we might be able to get some assistance from Dr. Datig about well, computer systems aboard the station. Uh, yeah, check for any interference or any sort of tampering you might notice within the program that runs a computer. All right, I'll dig into them immediately. Um, so GM, could I cross-reference the, uh, the computer records to see if there are any sort of artifacts of uh, manipulation or the like? There is, yeah, let's, uh, let's have you do a roll for this. Um... I'll offer you one of two things. You can either do an extended task, meaning you'll take time, but it'll be at a lower difficulty, or you can attempt to complete it quickly and it'll be a higher difficulty. Okay. Um, let's go for the higher difficulty one-shot task. Higher difficulty one-shot task it will be. This is going to be a difficulty of four, uh, reason and engineering. I could also okay. give you insight engineering. Uh, reason engineering uh, would be fine. Uh, my computers, no, I don't think I really have a focus there. Uh, so what I'll do is I will tap the value. Um, will do anything to prove himself because I'm actively trying to complete this task as quickly as possible in order to impress my commanding officer here. Okay. And I'll buy another extra die for two momentum. Okay. So reason and uh, engineering 3d20 materialization systems because it's transporter records most definitely yeah okay. all right four successes which is exactly what you needed uh, actually so, six because i tapped momentum i tapped well, my uh, value rather right but you rolled two successes and you got two from your value. So how are you getting to six? Sorry, I was looking at uh, what his previous roll. Ah, okay. I was a little confused there for a moment. I'm like, where, where is he getting the two from? All right. So, uh, Jono, what you notice is two things. And of course, if you want more information, you can ask with momentum. Uh, but what you notice initially are two very important things. The first is that the uh, neutronic storm that is approaching the area there is some form of a feedback issue in the cryoneural gel packs, meaning that the shielding is already inadequate around the computer systems. Like they're already experiencing intermittent failure. So that's a problem you're going to have to deal with very quickly. The second thing that you're noticing is that as Stetco said, the transporter logs from 800 to 900 hours were not only erased but were done so in a way that left a noticeable pattern now this pattern does not indicate who did it but it is extremely obvious especially to your trained eye that someone deliberately erased these logs then i suppose my question for you if i could uh, spend one momentum with the group's approval would be mm -hmm. uh where was this done this what was location? done from the console to your left. Like literally you turn around and look to your left and a console was used. Oh! Um, could I, could I cross reference the internal sensor logs of this room to see who was on duty at the time of uh, the, the hack? What I would say is that the computer churns and says error, personnel logs from XYZ time. And it's the same sort of thing where the computer just does not have the records for that time period. 
Well, it seems like we have a rather complicated mystery here on our hands, uh, Commander. This console right here, in fact, and he gestures to it with his tail, uh, was used to affect that pack of the transporter systems, and even the records of this room have been eliminated. So there's no way, on my end at least, to find out who did this. Um, so her mind immediately goes to Jaro. Um, and she's going to, well, I don't think she can do that from that distance because it's too far. Um, yeah, she and, could not so, slap me from there. Uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, you're basically, you're telling me that someone from within our engineering department wiped or sensor logs and created a feedback loop? Uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. A very succinct summary of, uh, of events, Commander. And when did you start your shift? I've been on shift uh, since this morning. Uh, oh, 800 hours. I've been pulling double shifts just to try to get the station prepared. And on that note, if you'll just give me one second. Uh, Lieutenant Jana to uh, the captain. Is we care. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Captain, we have a rather serious issue with the cryonural gel packs. They have, well, they appear to be quite susceptible to the uh, radiolytic interference of the storm. We're going to have to basically switch to isolinear backups. We're already getting so, some power fluctuations as a result of the uh, interference. How is that going to affect our shield integrity when the storm hits? Uh, well, Captain, I had the, uh, the foresight to have some engineering teams in place backing up the, uh, the isolytic backups. Well, that, that seems like a kind of a like a, a redundancy, but Starfleet loves its backups and backups. So, you know, just following protocol there, really, um, th that, that's kind of beside the point. The point is, it's not going to be pretty, and we're going to have to implement some rolling blackouts across the station, but uh, we'll be able to keep the shields up. Proceed at your discretion, and Lieutenant, I'm impressed. Kishwick out. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, sorry, Commander, you were saying. How exactly does a cat blush? Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm wondering. <laughs> um, we need to tell him our suspicions. You know what? I I don't really want to talk to him again. I mean, that, that seems like a really great place to leave off a conversation. So uh, maybe you could just be the bearer of the bad news. It's, you know, he's... Sure. Right, thank Stecco you. Stecco Captain. Is Rick here? Go ahead. Captain, um, I'm here with Jonna Engineering, and um, you asked me to check in on Lieutenant Sven. My, what have you found? We're having some issues with the computer and um, someone has initiated a feedback loop within our sensor logs and uh, what are they called? Transporter cryo neural, logs. Cryoneural gel packs. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and basically Sven is gone and the computer's been tampered with. I feel like I need to meet you in engineering to get a better grasp of the situation, but also you may want to elevate your security alert. Whoever is uh, doing this may be aligned with the hand. I'll see you in engineering. Here we go. All right. So I, I, I have pause. So that doesn't. Um, what does that? What does that mean? That aligned with the hand. <laughs> nice. Um. I'll fill you in when the captain gets here. All right. So uh, as the captain is transitioning down, uh, we're actually going to cut to uh, Terrell. And Terrell, you're, of course, doing that daring maneuver where you're sort of docking one of the auxiliary ships to uh, the bit of armor plating. And my question is... Um, how are you going about this? Are you being slow and deliberate? Are you being quick? And the reason I ask is because the storm 
uh, is noticeably larger. You maybe have 30 minutes before it hits the station. <laughs> the uh, the words slow and deliberate do not ever apply to Terrell. Okay. Uh, so he has uh, instructed the computer on this ship to blast uh, Blister in the Sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is going to uh, uh, go and take care of this as quickly as he can. All righty. So, Terrell, you're going to be rolling a Daring and a Con, a difficulty of three. And if someone could roll me just a standard D20, uh, you want to see <coughs> nine or lower, and that will be the ship assisting him. I can get the uh, the D20 roll. All right. All right. And I'm, uh, I'm assuming the uh, uh, difficulty goes down by one with precision maneuvering. It does. All right. And uh, we are going to also, uh, hey, look, we don't have any momentum. Let's try to get you some. Uh, I'll give you a threat. Okay. <laughs> and what was the roll again? Daring Con? You got it. All right. And uh, I have one of many different focuses. Yeah, so. I, I think you've got quite a few that could apply here. <clears throat> All right. And... Let me just make sure. Yep. Okay. Three successes. Yeah, there's, there's no reason to reroll any of those. Gotcha. Okay. Unfortunately, the ship doesn't help you, but uh, three successes means you do get one momentum. So we uh, we sort of see an external shot of the station again as you take one of those old Antares class freighters and more or less flip it perpendicular or parallel with the station and make it so that it is leaning up against the interior of one of these armor platings towards the lower part of the station. Um, but I tell you what, I'm actually going to spend, I believe it is six threat to immediately nice. end the scene, in that as Kijwick, as you walk into main engineering, and Terrell, as you finish docking, what happens is the storm suddenly accelerates, and automatically, the station is configured to go to red alert to activate the protective shielding. But all across the station, what happens is almost not quite a blackout, but the power flickers. And as, again, Kishwick, as you're walking into main engineering, you see, you know, power flickering, consoles, beeping, things of that nature. But what really uh, sort of catches the viewer's attention to sort of use that camera mechanic a little bit more is we go back to Dottig in sickbay, and Dottig, you're noticing that the flu patients from earlier, the four that were in the beds, have literally started experiencing cardiac arrest. As in they're having a heart attack. Well. I know what's happening, but I don't know why. And that's mm -hmm. what I need to find out. So is there a role that I could make? Yeah, let me uh, get everybody to med bay here so we can sort of look at that. So Jenkins, I imagine by this point, Jenkins is gone. Uh, Greg Axe is working elsewhere. Uh, but as you and Carr sort of run in to check on your patients, uh, go ahead and roll me a reason medicine difficulty of one. And would my focus in xenobiology apply? Give it to you, yeah. There's a variety of species on display here. Two successes, which means you get one momentum. Dottig, normally you wouldn't have thought to think of this, but uh, are you familiar with the concept of espirating? Espirating, the neurotransmitter levels in the brain that govern telepathic and empathic ability correct what you're noticing is that all four of these patients are experiencing high esper levels and that's are odd they... because you know maybe it makes sense for the human like yeah you know you miss the human's esper level but you're seeing a rigelian with this and to your knowledge the rigelians have never ever shown a sort of inclination towards being uh you know psychic potential 
There's also the Andorian. While, you know, there is that sort of Anar, the offshoot of the Andorian, it still shouldn't happen here. And the really most baffling point of all of them is the fourth individual, a Betazoid. The Betazoid is experiencing lower levels of Esperating, as in their abilities are being hampered. Uh, oh, they're also still having a heart attack, so just to, right. you know. So, uh, well, can I... Uh, I, I want to attempt to stabilize them first, stabilize their conditions okay. uh, up to and including putting them in medical stasis. All righty. Uh, so let's see. Why don't you roll me a daring medicine? Uh, difficulty of two. You know what? I'll spend some threat. Make it a difficulty three. And uh, if you have triage, if you have emergency medicine, all would be good focuses. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Yeah, I've got that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and buy an extra die for a point of momentum. All right. Two successes. So it was a difficulty of three. I don't think, uh, well, I guess you do have determination. Would you like to spend determination to reroll that zero? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. And I will, um, Let's see. I'm going to tap my value first. Do no harm. All right. And I guess I'll just reroll the d20 and we'll see. Or actually, I can just do it like this. Daring medicine. Here we are. Oh, dear. Interesting. Uh, to be fair, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll four challenge die. And if I roll an effect, unfortunately, it means that your patient has expired. Okay. All right. So four challenge die. All right. So the good news is you save three of them. The bad news is the Rigelian does not make it, unfortunately. Oh, boy. And I think for flavor purposes... I think the Rigelian is the first actual death on the station. Mm -hmm. And I'll look at Lieutenant Carr. Say, uh, Lieutenant, time of death, 15, 25 hours. Please note it in the log. And uh, he says, um, of course, sir, um, I honestly don't know what's the procedure here. Do we tell the captain or? I will tell the captain, but first, please, please place the cadaver into medical storage. We're going to need to run a full autopsy. I could run that myself, sir. Uh, would you like me to get started right away? Prep for it, but do not begin until I get there. Roger that. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, I have had an idea. Can we run? I know they were exposed to a, a, a strain of flu, mm -hmm. um, but can we run a standard uh, tox screen to mm -hmm. see if perhaps they have any foreign substances in their body or um, since we're dealing with aspirating, heightened levels of psilocybin? Yeah, certainly. I'm going to offer you the same sort of deal I offered to Jana earlier. You can either do a high difficulty short task or you can do a extended, ex eh, literally an extended task, but a lower difficulty. Uh, let's do the higher difficulty short task. All right. So this is going to be a difficulty of five. And I'm going to say this is going to be a reason medicine. Okay. And the station can assist you. And it will assist you with computer's medicine. However, because of the storm, as, as Jana found out, the cryonergel packs are sort of experiencing failure. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is the complication range is automatically, without me spending any threat, is going to be at its maximum. So 16 to 20 is a complication. Okay. Can somebody get the station for me, please? 
Got it. Nice. All right. Oh, John beat you to it. So we'll take that first one. Okay. So you need four successes here. All right. So I am going to buy uh, an extra die with momentum. Okay. Uh, I am also going to buy an additional die with two points of threat. Okay. And also, I hear crickets. I don't know who that is, but I hear crickets. <laughs> Pretty sure it's Lovecraft, actually. He, he's gone from, uh, you know, he's gone from uh, high pitched wine to literal crickets. I love it. <laughs> oh, dear. But yeah, uh, Datig, that is a grand total of six successes, which means you do indeed actually get a momentum back from that. And you're looking at the readout and your jaw almost drops as you realize what this is. But that's a dramatically appropriate moment to go to break. So we're going to be back in 10 minutes. Everybody stick around.
back. All right, welcome back, everybody, to uh, part two of uh, our session two, which is turning out to be a uh, expanding mystery. We've got missing people. We've got uh, computer acting up. We've got a whole lot of situations on the station that are just sort of compounding on one another. But uh, our scene that we're going to have right after break is we're going to return to main engineering again. Kijwick, you have just stepped into main engineering. The power fluctuations have happened. And after a moment, uh, the red lighting flickers and then goes a bit more steady, followed by um, the at least the consoles here in engineering uh, returning to full power with almost like a, a powerful hum, if that makes any sense. Report. Uh, well, Captain, we've managed to transfer over to the uh, isolinear ships rather than the cryonerial gel packs. Uh, and we do have a number of power losses throughout the station, but my engineering teams are on top of it. We seem to be, well, holding together from the most part. Let's make sure the civilian quarters are protected. And if they need to be moved to more protected areas, then I suppose a couple of families can live together for a week. But we want to make sure that their survival is prioritized. Uh, Commander Setko, maybe you can coordinate with some of my engineering teams. We can identify the most well-protected locations and set up some, I guess, emergency refugee areas sure. if necessary. Yeah, um, we could take a look at the, the storm's trajectory and make sure that the part of the station that's taking the brunt of it is um, evacuated. And Stedko, you had findings regarding Lieutenant Sven? Uh, just a few. No Sven. I did go to her quarters and find her uniform, almost as though she was transported out of it. The computer told me that there was no transport that occurred, but my tricorder indicated differently. All right. That seems foul. Yeah. So I came here and asked Jana to run a diagnostic on uh, the computer, uh, the program. And uh, Jana, do you want to tell them what you found? Uh, well, it's essentially what I told you uh, by way of our communication. Uh, or Commander Stetko did, uh, it seems as if the computer records on board the station regarding both the occupancy of engineering and the uh, the transporter logs have all been altered. Uh, Those were all done here at this station? Uh, yes, sir. Have we run a organosynthetic analysis of who made it of the computers? to see if someone has touched it and if we have a biosignature that we can glean off it. Uh, we might need Dr. Dottig for that, but uh, Commander Stetko, that would be more your area in terms of forensic investigations than mine. I can scan the area. All right. So what I would say is that this is again going to be a high difficulty task. So uh, for Stetko, this would be a reason and a security uh, and again, if you have anything forensic related, I would not give you behavioral analysis for this one. Um, it would specifically have to be forensics as a focus. Uh, I have forensic psychology, but I avoided taking forensic science because it was kind of overused with LL. So um, this is true. I don't think I this have anything. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll be nice. Go ahead Ooh. and change your focus back to forensic science because I think it is a very important thing for you to have. Okay. Um, and I'll let you use the focus here, but uh, it's going to be a difficulty of five. And okay. you have the option of doing it yourself, uh, no assist, or what you can do is you can call Dottig or maybe even Terrell. You never know, maybe Terrell has some insights. You could call one of the others. Uh, you could even call upon Jana or the captain. But what I would say is you only get one assist. And I'll just go through the line here. If it's Dottig, he'd be doing a reason medicine. If it's Jana, he'd be doing a reason engineering. Terrell, I think, would be doing probably an insight and command or an insight con. The captain would be doing an insight command for sure. I uh, shall tap her badge. This is Stetco to the dock. Don't think here, Commander. Can this wait? I'm very busy. All right. Um... Denied. 
from from one senior officer to another, I would only call you if this was important. Very Unless good. someone's literally dying. Well, uh, not presently. Oh? What do you need? She kind of looks at, K- at Kijwa because I'm like, I'm sure he can hear this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and she's just like, uh, well, we need you in engineering and make sure you bring your medical tricorder. Good, good. I will be there directly. Um, would Lieutenant Jana and Captain Kijwick be present? Aye. Yes. Excellent. I have news. And uh, since I, I'll be there directly. Kijwick, if not Kijwick, I'm Dotig. Dotig out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, John, <laughs> Mr. Jana, while we wait for the good doctor, can you scan, uh, the, can you get internal sensors on the station to scan for any electrostatic residual charges that may have occurred during the missing transporter records? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Of course, you're looking for perhaps transporter traces from somewhere along the station. Yeah, anything that happened, uh, anything that registered on internal sensors between 0800 and 0900 will give us a look at an idea of transporter activity on the station during that time. Hmm. Um, so I will do that. And two other things I'd like to look for using the internal sensor grid, if I could. The first would be, are there any anomalous life signs? For instance, life signs on the station in locations that they should not be. So I'll mm-hmm. cross-reference that against like my engineering teams. I know where they are in the Jeffrey's tube system. And I would try to, uh, to sort of filter them out and see if there's um, anyone in there. And also unusual power drains on the station. Okay. Yeah, I'll include that in your role. Um, trying to think here what to make this difficulty for you. Um, and it's something I forgot, and we got to be a little bit better about this. But uh, because you're actually the chief engineer and you're in engineering, all engineering tasks are one difficulty less for you. So keeping that in mind, it was going to be a difficulty of four because you're in main engineering as the chief engineer. It goes down to difficulty of three. Uh, this is going to be a insight in engineering, and you have the option of the computer assisting you. But remember, as you're in the neutronic storm and with the computer failure, there is a very high complication range if you use the main computer. Then I think I am going to be assisted by the computer. All right. So if someone could get the computers, uh, let's do computers and engineering, please. Actually, no, let's do uh, sensors engineering for this one. And I will buy one extra die using momentum. I, I can get the computer's uh, sensors engineering role. All right. Would, let's say, Starship construction apply because I'm sort of scanning the infrastructure of the station with respect to Jeffrey's tubes and the like? Or... Yeah, I'll give it to you. That's, that was a real stretch. That is, you are a very generous <laughs> man. <laughs> well, uh, don't call me generous yet because that's mm. only uh, one success and a complication. Ooh, boy. Yeah. Now, of course... Uh, okay, so that's two successes, which means you are needing one more here. Uh, do you want to challenge a value? Because I think you've already used your determination here. I have, yes. Um, actually, you know what I just remembered? Kiswick, you're the captain. He's in communication with you. You can give him your point of determination. Um... Okay. Uh, would that uh, trigger my veteran? If I it would. It would indeed trigger your veteran. But uh, what I would ask is I need to have a little bit of role play that brings in Kijwick to whatever Jana's doing. Mr. Jana, you look a little overburdened there. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I shouldn't have taken on so much. I mean, I, I should have just stuck with the, the power drain or I mean, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of var- variables here. And I, You doubt yourself too much. I wouldn't have selected you to be the chief engineer of my station if I didn't think you could do the job. Breathe. Take your time. I know you can do this. And I'll spend my determination to try and reinforce your skill. All right. So, yeah, Jana, you have the option of rerolling those two zeros. Um, Okay. What you got, Lonnie? 
Stetco will be like kind of doing her thing while they do that, but she'll be like getting the feel, like the empath emotions from Kijwick mm -hmm. to see if he's lying about what he just said. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> oh. And she'll be like, he's not lying. Zaldin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just to like reinforce it a little. Yeah, I like it. So insights, engineering, and 2d20. Mm -hmm. And I will tap my value. Um, there's no one I'd rather get into trouble with or out of trouble with than Jaro Terrell, because okay. he has been accused basically by Commander Stedko, and I am desperately trying to get him out of trouble, as I often do. I like it. I like it. All right, so you got rid of the complication. You get two successes for a grand total of four, which means you get a point of momentum. So, John, I'm going to hit you with a barrage of facts, and uh, if you need me to repeat any of them, just let me know. So, fact number one. You are seeing that there are three major areas of the station that are experiencing sensor fa failure, meaning you cannot use the internal sensors on them. The first area is anything below deck 206. So deck 206 to deck 250, the absolute bottom of the station. So that's about 44 decks, which you have no sensors on. There's also portions of the Arboretum. Now, we haven't really talked about the Arboretum on the station, but I would say that almost maybe about 10 or so decks of the quote-unquote promenade, the saucer section, um, are devoted to an open like park area where you have restaurants, uh, maybe even something akin to uh, Grand Central Park in New York, where there's just a large greenery area, and you have no sensor in the Arboretum. So that's a significant area. The third area where you're experiencing sensor loss is, interestingly enough, in the same section of the saucer section where your quarters, Terrell's quarters, and a few other junior officers are experienced, are sort of quartered. So... Those are your three areas there. That's item one. Item two, you asked about anomalous life signs. What you're noticing is that for good or bad, you're not really sure what's going on here. The life sign reading on the station is fluctuating. It is both increasing and decreasing seemingly at random. The third thing, uh, remind me what your third thing was. Actually, as I say that, what was the third thing you were looking for? Um. I was anomalous life signs. There is a sensor failures, and I can't recall what the third thing was. To say You're right. Else, yeah, so. I had I had the same sort of brain uh, it front was, there. If Cat there, help. if we was it the residual electrostatic charges? That's there, right. From eight to nine. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yes. So it's one of those interesting things where the sensor loss uh, that you're seeing. So those areas of the sensor loss are probably because of the storm because you are seeing in the logs that there are electrostatic charges in your quarters, in Terrell's quarters, also in deck 249. Uh, well, Captain, I don't know. It's difficult to tell with all this electromagnetic soup that's actually interfering with the internal sensors, but it seems like we have possible transporter signatures in my quarters and uh and uh well on deck uh, 249 uh we're losing sensors in three major locations pretty much everything below deck 206 the arboretum and uh well a number of the officers quarters including mine wait deck 206 that's that was Sven's quarters so there might be an electrostatic charge there that we're not picking up. But deck 249, what's on deck 249? Add a character. On deck 249, you have basically four large cargo bays and nothing else. Stadco, send, send a grunt team fully armed to 249 and have them report back with uh, anybody they find. Hey, sir. This is Stetco to Alpha Team. Uh, arm yourselves. Just type two phasers. And uh, I want you to sweep the cargo cargo bays on deck 249. 
Roger that, sir. Uh, question for you, though. Uh, we're experiencing turbo lift failure. Do you want us to go in through the Jeffries tubes? Yes. Or if you, well, John, uh, how are the site to site transporters functioning? Uh, given that we don't have accurate sensor readings of those lower decks, I'd be somewhat hesitant to use transporter systems. We don't know if anything's moved in, into a new location, even if we're going off schematics. It's going to take them an hour to get down there through a Jeffrey's how, tube. How many ships do we have docked in the saucer? And can we coordinate with their transporter teams to see if we can get them down there faster? I was wondering to see if I would have to mention it. Um, yeah, you have somewhere on the order of 30 to 40 vessels, including the how that you could use to transport from them into the location. Or we could just drive the how down there. Yeah, just literally fly the how <laughs> down there with Terrell and have it almost like dock with the cargo bay. That is an option. I don't, I'd certainly give you style points. Mm. Oh, there's a storm outside. Well, yeah. that's the thing. So sort of to sort of remind everybody is, so the station is currently shielded. So the shields are up and we sort of see the flicker of the shields across the, uh, as the neutronic storm sort of washes over the station. Mm -hmm. So there's a bubble around the station. You can fly within that bubble reasonably well. I mean, it is a bit more complicated, but I believe in Terrell. I think Terrell could do it. I think a Are shuttle there multiple would... shields? Like an onion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you okay. go. The station is like an ogre. It has many layers. Mm -hmm. Why not a parfait? Everybody likes a parfait. Oh God! <laughs> uh, can I can I do my role to sense any life signs, like any micro, just just engineering itself? With um, you can, but before we get into that, I don't want to lose sight of this. Okay. Uh, it is right about then that Dottig, you walk in to main engineering as well. Dot Doctor, thank you for joining us. You did. Give us just one second. Stetco, have your security team coordinate with uh, Terrell and the How and have them uh, take that shuttle. Aye, sir. Um, it might be best if I scan engineering with Datig together. I think we could uncover maybe some life signs here. There we go. Behind. All right. Datig will cut in and say, Captain, I wouldn't recommend anybody take a shuttle out into that, especially not through the shield grid. Shields are currently holding, and we have a possible theft in progress on Deck 249 with transporters that are unreliable on the station. Well, we may have a much more sizable problem. I have too many sizable problems today, Doctor. And he'll, he'll turn to Jana and say, Lieutenant, uh, you reported some issues with the cryoneural gel packs. Yes, they were being adversely affected by the radiolytic isotopes in the uh, encroaching storm. Yes, well, their reaction is strangely reminiscent to individuals on this station who were exposed to a viral infection. It's just doesn't make any sense. The shield grid should be protecting us. Even the structural integrity field, they've been improved remarkably since the last time a Federation starship had to batten down the hatches and survive in a storm. It just doesn't make any sense. Is this your first day you're in Starfleet? Oh, right. It, nothing makes any sense. Okay. Um, Doctor, are you saying that my station's cryopacks are sick? Uh, a crude but accurate analog. Not only that, the radiolytic isotopes potentially are having a strange reaction with the treatment for the virus. Captain, um, due to the rapidly escalating nature of this situation, permission to seal all emergency bulkheads Granted. So kind of key that in and say, Doctor, I need your help over here. One impossible thing at a time, gentlemen. Let's figure out who's messing with this station. Oh, dude. 
Since when does a security chief need a doctor's help to steal bulkheads? Oh, I need your help. Your tricoder is much more sensitive than mine. You should oh. be able to pick up any kind of micro life signs. Right. The panel. I remember. <laughs> All right. And, uh, so, uh, Dottig, because you're here with a medical tricorder, this is another thing we have to remember, is that a medical tricorder, as long as you're using it, confers the same sort of bonus where, again, it was a difficulty of five. That now comes down to a difficulty of four because you're involved with a medical tricorder. Okay. And you said my assistance would be reason medicine? You got it. And I'm, am I doing reason security? You are, yes. Okay. You want an extra die for that with momentum? Do, how much do we have? You have, have one, one momentum. You could yeah. give him two threat for another die as well. Do you want some threat, Gian? I, I, I would love some threat. <laughs> Why don't you just take some of that? All righty. <laughs> and I roll three. Mm -hmm. Well, four because... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, two. Okay. Um, and not to not to beat a dead horse, GM, but would uh, xenobiology count here? I'd say it would. Yeah. All right. Cool. Wow. Oh God. Wow. <laughs> oh Lord. Let's do some um, determination rerolling there. So, yeah, 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 um, yeah. what does my cautious security get? Me? <laughs> uh, your cautious security means you can reroll one of those complications, but. Wow. So yeah, I'm you... gonna I'm gonna interject for a second. I never rolled my dice for my determination. To see yeah, very important. Let's see if you get an effect. So is that a challenge dice or just a d20? Challenge die. Yeah, and you want to see an effect. Okay. So challenge die one. Let's pray for an effect. No effect, effect unfortunately. So yeah, uh, Stetko. I have you. I think you've used your determination, haven't you? Okay, so if you tap a value here, you could re-roll with your determination. Um, I can I can tell when you're lying, because she's on the trail of somebody who's deceiving the whole crew. <laughs> I'll give it to you. I am a generous GM. <laughs> um. Okay. So what am I re-rolling here? Uh, as many of those dice as you wish. I, I oh, would do okay. all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, one of those zeros isn't all that bad. You know, it's, it's a yeah. good looking like zero. Keep the, like keep the, the two red ones. I like red. But... It's nice. It's a good color. It's a good color. <laughs> all right. Oh, significantly yeah. better. So I believe that has a total Jesus. of five successes, which means you get a momentum <laughs> back. I did change that value now. Uh, no, no, you keep it. You just use the value. Oh, you, okay. It's if you challenge a value that you would have had to replace it. Oh, okay. I've never really used it. That's what we're going to have to do later before. when we don't have any determination left. And we yeah, that's to... that's when a challenge would come in. Part <laughs> two. All right. So here's what you and Dottig look uh, at your tricorders. And you kind of do one of those things where both of you kind of look at your tricorders and maybe give them a little bit of a slap on the side. And you scan again. And then you look at each other and you compare your results. There's a changeling on your station. No, what? Knew it as soon as we saw that empty uniform. We've got the. Is Stetko. Am I crazy or does this look like a morphogenic matrix to you? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> oh, a morphogenic matrix, Captain. It's, uh, well, the shape shifting race. I mean, you're old enough. You remember the Dominion War, right? Yeah. Well, do you remember the founders, the change? Yeah. Things? You're, no, <laughs> you're, you're preaching to the choir, Doc. I'm not going to do a red <laughs> alert because I don't want anybody freaking out about this. Well, we're already at red alert. Well, go to double red <laughs> alert, which actually is a thing. There is an actual double red the alert black in alert. canon. <laughs> anyway, there's one of those running around here. At least one. We still had three officers that didn't, or three other officers that didn't show up to their shift today. Two other officers that didn't show up? Three. Where is Terrell? This is, this is where nobody should mention that all three of the officers are on Terrell's crew. <laughs> and we Johnny need to get down to deck 249. Kijwik to Hatea. 
And uh, Hatea, who I was going to mention at one point, uh, she reports in, uh, yes, sir, what can I do for you? Can you patch in house transporters and do a site-to-site -site transport for uh, Alpha Team, myself, Lieutenant Stetko? Lieutenant, I need you here to watch the energy readouts and make sure the station doesn't fall apart. And bring Terrell uh, to deck 249 on the station. All right. Uh, give me one moment. Uh, let me set up cargo bay before we go any further. So, Kijwick, you're going. Terrell is being beamed with you, whether he knows it or not. Uh, Stetko, you're going. Mm -hmm. And then, so I have Kijwick, Stetko, Terrell. Uh, I'm guessing Dantig isn't coming along. Dantig is staying there. Yeah, yeah I'm not, I would not need... mess with those things. Those things are crazy. I still yeah. need, I need Dantig to still coordinate medical resources and I need John to hold the station together. Okay. Um, do you want to bring uh, for um, for Aaron and for Lovecraft, you guys want to bring a supporting character? That is an option. Ooh. And I would say that Jenkins actually does have a character sheet if one of you wants to take over Jenkins. Uh, Why the heck not? Let's do it. Let's try this. <gasps> yeah. okay. uh, there you go. Um, I will activate uh, Lieutenant Dorset, the operations officer for the station. I okay. would probably have a fairly good idea of what's actually stored down in that cargo bay. He that would. he would. All right. So uh, what I'm going to say is you guys have an option here. You can either do the role as Commander Hatea, as she's the one doing the transporting uh, role, and she could succeed, she could fail. You know, there's that sort of chance there. Or we can say this automatically succeeds, but there's a complication. Which would you guys prefer? Automatic success with a complication. Yeah, I'm that's my pick. I have a value. It's risk as part of the game. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Hatea, of course, keys in all the relevant personnel and quite literally, uh, Kijwick and Stetko uh, dematerialize uh, right in front of uh, Datig and in front of uh, Janna. And five people materialize in the cargo bay on deck 249. Uh, you, of course, have Kijwick and Stetko, but Terrell, you've literally been yanked from some random corridor on your way back to probably your quarters, or so I assume. So you have no idea what's going on. Uh, Jenkins and Dorset, you guys were a little bit more informed, um, so you're not entirely su surprised, but you kind of were like, oh, wow, I'm here now. And did the we, cargo bay itself... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Did we get Alpha Team as well? That is the complication, is that as you five materialize, Alpha Team does not appear with you. Mm. And immediately, Kijwick, as you start to look around the cargo bay, uh, Atea reports, um, sir, we were unable to get a transporter con confirmation for Alpha Team. I've Got them back to safety, but um, you're kind of on your own there, sir. Can you have them, can you dispatch a shuttle to pick them up and bring them down here ASAP? Uh, yes, sir. And uh, as that happens, let me describe the cargo bay a little bit. So the cargo bay is actually a fairly sizable area. Um, there's actual crates here that are being pulled along by worker bees. And I would say that this area stretches even further down than the map indicates, but you're easily looking at maybe a football field size cargo bay like this place is huge and it's almost like that one scene in indiana jones where you have just crates after crates after crates and barrels after barrels and it, it's like that archival room that we see in indiana jones lieutenant terrell glad you could join us sorry for the surprise there but we have an issue hey lieutenant better better now than in five minutes i was going to be in the shower so good to know lieutenant dorset nice to see you again lieutenant jenkins glad to see you in one piece this time a pleasure sir we will work on that you may right, have gentlemen. momentum for attempting the voice <laughs> yeah. i'm trying we, we have a changeling aboard and it has sabotaged a couple of systems and we are expecting uh cargo theft. So, Mr. Dorset, if you could keep an eye out for anything that stands out that's missing, that'd be great. And, uh, Terrell, 
if you happen to ha accidentally crash a worker bee into a changeling, I'm not going to hold it against you. Challenge accepted, sir. Um, Stetko's going to start kind of sweeping the area a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe over here. Okay. And she's going to like throw Terrell like a glare and be like, where have you been? You know, not that it's any of your business, but I was parking a freighter on the inside of the shielding units outside. So, you know, I've been busy. Uh, it is exactly my business as chief of security. All right. She's well, you would be you'd be happy to know that the freighter is secured. And he gives her a salute. Lieutenant. Oh, my God. Did you hard dock a freighter to the exterior hull? Yes. Uh, who did you get that authorization from? There's nothing about that in my ATC log. You know, you know the captain was cool with it. He looks over at the captain. <laughs> You you know I can tell you're lying, right? No, you work. You didn't reply back in a negative manner on my uh, on my request. That's what that gibberish was. Okay, gentlemen, we have a changeling to find. Uh, Stetko, correct me if I'm wrong, but wide beam level four will knock them into their organic state. Uh, should, sir. Never fought a changeling before. And how do we know it's not him? It's very simple. I can take off his hand and we see if blood emerges. Is not changeling. Well, there's a line for that, <laughs> Jenkins. You, you do have seniority, ma'am. This is your right. Yeah, there is a line. And that's a line we do not cross. Ah, you are a very clever man. Very, very clever wordplay. Yes. Lieutenant Dorset, any uh, anything out of place here? GM, I'd like you to roll <laughs> me a insight and engineering, please. Difficulty of two. So changelings can be anything, right? Anything or anyone. Uh, I'm going to spend a point of momentum for an additional uh, d20. All right. And all right. And since this is an activation for Dorset, uh, mm -hmm. can I give him a focus? You can. Uh, I am going to give him the logistics focus. All right. Oh. Not quite enough, and unfortunately, he does not have a value, so he does not have determination. Does not. So I'm going to say that you. I'm going to let you succeed at cost, but instead of taking okay. threat, I'm going to say I'm going to take a complication instead. So okay. Dorset, you're running, you know, uh, a, an inventory list on your tricorder and comparing it to the stacks, and you notice that there are not any things missing. But there is a stack of blue barrels that isn't supposed to be here and isn't on your log. Well, sir. <laughs> you can just point at the blue barrels and say, those shouldn't be here. I feel like I'm going to blow up the station, but, you know, I trust you. <laughs> and Kishwick will. I hate doing this, but I'm going for it. You're Kiswick will uh, apply a wide beam at level four uh, in the vicinity of the barrels. All right, Charles, I need you. Charles got to take cover behind this crate. <laughs> Probably a good idea. So, uh, Kiswick, first things first, I need you to roll me a control and a security. Difficulty of two. Hand phasers or handheld energy weapons as a focus. Focus. All right. Yay, so I didn't succeed. 
I think what happens is Kijwick is you go to fire your phaser, and it sort of does that eh sound where it doesn't discharge. Eh -er. Yeah, that <laughs> noise. <laughs> oh. Check the battery on it. It is drained. Terrell uh, looks so Terrell looks over at Stedco. If only we properly maintained our firearms. Uh, she'll she'll try and throw. Kijwick hers. Because I find it funny, I need you to roll me a control security, oh and God. if you have throwing or anything of that nature, this would apply. <laughs> what is it? I control security? Control security, yeah. I have oh. energy-based small arms technology. <laughs> I, I, if you're shooting games of Kizik, chance. I have games of chance. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I have games of chance. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. That's yes. only if you throw it with your eyes closed. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just I was spin around in a circle. So she would rather shoot herself than do that. <laughs> I, was, I was kind of thinking she's just going to pull her face from Stun Durrell. <laughs> oh. Like, yeah, <laughs> oh my god, that is beautiful. Oh no. That what? is freaking what? beautiful. I remember oh, I remember no. having sessions where we just rolled so terribly. It's 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 Archuleta versus Jensen all over again. Oh my god. Oh, no. All right, I think I know exactly what's going to happen here. <laughs> all right, so Stetko, you cock your arm back and go to throw the phaser, but maybe you apply too much pressure and what's going to happen is the phaser is going to discharge mid-air. And I'm going to roll a D5 to see who you hit with your phaser. And that, it, it has to be Jenkins. Uh, I believe or... with a five, that is Jenkins. <laughs> so, Stetko, I need you to roll me. Uh, this is a type two phaser, yeah? I need you to roll me it's eight a challenge type die, please. Two no, 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 you can't have a negative two. <laughs> I need you to roll Minus me two? eight challenge die here. Eight. Eight challenge die. Or a or seven, eight. eight. The number seven. Okay. Yeah, seven, oh eight. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh God. so Jenkins, you're <laughs> oh going to take God. six stress of damage, which is an injury. <laughs> As you are stunned by oh the phaser. Oh my god, this is so <laughs> I, I noticed that Jenkins has a value. Pain is just weakness leaving the body. So what I'd like to do <laughs> is give you determination to stay standing after that. Okay, so Jenkins takes it like a man, as the colloquialism is. But we're not done. The phaser's still flying through the air. Uh, Kijwick, how's your reflexes? He's an I'm old man. Please... Please catch it and discharge the phaser into Jenkins again. Not either. I am skilled in non-lethal takedowns. I, oh, I, I remember that one. I remember that one. Okay. Uh, let's say that you have two options. You can either catch it, automatically succeed, but there's a complication, or you can roll for it. Oh my god, end this. Um, <laughs> can I tap a value? Risk is part of the game? You certainly can for two free successes. But you and still have to roll because there is a yeah. chance of complication. Did so you use it? Control, control I security. thought you used it. Oh, by yeah, you did use your that. determination because you didn't get it back with veteran. That's what it was. You've already yeah. used it. Yeah. Oh, my bad. No, it's good. Okay. Uh, well, then. Um, how is the phaser still discharging? This is obnoxious. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, I'm gonna. I think of the atmosphere, Captain. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna attempt attempt to catch it. All right. The good news is it's fairly simple. It's just a control security difficulty of one. I would even give you fitness security. Don't know if that's hard uh, for you. My my control security is preferred. Um. I have energy weapons, so I know how to catch a phaser when it's discharging. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it to you. I've been through a couple of wars. So I know how this works. <laughs> okay, so you get a momentum. So yeah, phaser goes off midair, hits Jenkins, Jenkins takes it, and then Kijwick, you catch the phaser. We have ruined perfectly good uniform. This is... Uh, I. Uh, this is sorry. grievous insult to me. I'm sorry. Um, I'll replicate you a new one. Uh, thank you, Commander. This is much appreciated. It must be something <clears throat> going on in the atmosphere. 
Kishwick is going to yeah. realize that this has been kind of nuts with the phasers. Dorset, can you check the packing slips on these to see if they are legit and just failed to get registered? Bootlegged. <laughs> Sir. Phasers? Nothing gets failed to... We don't fail to register anything on my station. All right, well, if I shoot these barrels and they explode, it's coming out of your replicator rations for the rest of your service in Starfleet. With respect, sir, I find that to be an unfair allocation of blame. I have voiced to you that these barrels are not supposed to be here. If you choose to discharge a weapon into something that you are unsure of what it is, uh, I believe, sir, the responsibility is yours. Period. Also, Commander Stetko. Nice shot. Nice throw. <laughs> Here's Thanks. Victor Jana. Particularly effective, but okay. Uh, Captain, may I suggest that I simply go over to barrels and open them to see what is inside? This will solve many of our problems. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. He's really not wrong. <laughs> yeah, um, how go about, ahead. Uh, how, how about a tricorder scan? No, because if you scan it, it's going to register as a barrel. That's that's the thing about changing. But if it's if it's an explosive barrel, it'll register as a potentially dangerous explosive barrel. It makes a great point. Right. I don't know. Let's real... ask Jenkins. Jenkins, would you just go over and open it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it was the harm. All right. So Jenkins, you go over to the barrels, you pull open the lid, and inside is biomimetic gel. That should be Knew there. it! Hmm. I do not know what this is. Uh, step oh. away from that, and uh, Kiswick wants to... Uh, Stetco, I want to erect a level 10 force field around that. Seems like... Uh, Aye, what's, on the, what's on the other side of this wall? Is this space on the other side of this wall? Space. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to blow a hole in here. <laughs> okay, out of character, is biomimetic jelly really explosive? Yes. It can be used to make very volatile explosives. I mess. thought it was like uh, you could... Use it in me medical apps. Oh yeah. Oh, you can, yeah, but can, that's can, why it's so. A it's like substance. it's like a Deus Ex. Yeah. Whatever. It's okay. uh, it's like Omni Gel in Mass Effect that it can be used. Oh, for Oh, you could use it for anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and just because everybody is staring at the freaking barrels, mm -hmm. uh, Terrell is scanning the rest of the bay, mm -hmm. and just keeping an eye out because, you know, if he was somebody that was up to no good. Uh, I would use this Which opportunity of everybody staring at these barrels to do something. Tell you what, I'm going to message you something in private. I know this is going to be a little bit of a pause, but I'm going to message you something in private, yes. and you get to tell me uh, which you would prefer. Mm. <laughs> uh, Captain, do you want me to put lid back on barrel? Yes. Uh, very good, sir. Um, there you go, John. I'm not just... What would you prefer, John? Camera one, camera two. All right. So uh, what happens is all as all of you are focused on the barrels, uh, Stetco, you know, you, you're watching the barrels and the captain, but out of the corner of your eye, you see the form of Terrell changing, and Terrell <gasps> reveals himself to be the changeling you are looking for as he immediately starts to attack you. Would she have gonna... sensed the deception? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because he's I a changeling, you can't right. sense he, changelings. He would, and if he was Terrell. He and he was Terrell. Terrell. Okay. But I tell you what, I think that's an excellent place to end today's session because <laughs> that's a good cliffhanger. Oh boy. Yeah. Coming up next. I just want to Jenkins be changeling. I just want to note that I, I noticed you conveniently left out Terrell in your electrostatic charge report, Jonna. You're like, my quarters, but not Terrell's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've just, you know, I, I'm a really young officer. We make these kinds of oversights. It's an oversight. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, you know a what they lie. say about cliffhangers. Oh, yeah. An omission. What are friends for, right? Great. I don't know, Watney, what, what do they say about cliffhangers? 
Oh, it's I what, see what they you say did. About <laughs> I see what you did. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll play it's it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's where I'm going to kill the stream. Uh, Twitch, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the bit donations, Mr. Anonymous or Mrs. Anonymous. And thank you, of course, John, for your donation as well. And uh, also, whoever did the 50 to extra life. Thank you so much. But uh, that's where I'm going to end the stream. See you, stream.